Hello. I pray you are well today. There are lies we believe. How many lies are you believing today, for instance? One of the lies that we often believe is the lie that we are trapped in our circumstances and by our circumstances. That we're like stuck, like a mouse in a trap or a fly on a piece of fly paper. We are stuck. I want to read to you from Romans chapter 8. It says this, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What exactly does that mean? We know that in all things, we are not stuck. Things we've chosen for ourselves that are not helpful, things that other people have chosen for us that aren't helpful, things that happen that you can't find anybody else to blame. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. For he goes on to say, what shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Whatever the circumstance you're dealing with in your life, if God is for you, and he is, not even that circumstance can be against you. He, he wins. Therefore, you win. I'm not suggesting it's easy. I'm not suggesting it's without pain. I'm not suggesting it's without difficulty. But it says, if God is for us, who could be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. In other words, the most important gift that could ever be given in the history of the world was given to you. The death of Jesus Christ. How much more so, it uses this language, and how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? In other words, if he gave you the best thing that could ever be given, how much more so can you trust him with a smaller thing? Who bring any charge against those who God has chosen? Who couldn't speak against you? As it goes on, it is only God who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? No one. Only Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. He's praying for you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? What's your list? What's the list of your challenges, your threats, your pain, your brokenness? God says, and all these things, whatever that list is, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am convinced, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, neither what you're dealing with now or the future, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what does that mean? It means you shouldn't lie to yourself, and I shouldn't lie to myself. It means you are not trapped in your circumstance, and I am not trapped in mine. Because God has said, we know, we understand, we grasp, that in all things, in all things in your life and all things in my life, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. His purpose is bigger than your life and mine. His purpose lasts beyond your lifetime and mine. His purpose is his plan of redemption for the world. And we have just one small part in the set of relationships that we are in. But I say to you, you are not caught in your circumstance. You are called by God. I want to thank you for your generosity I want to thank you for your generosity for people who have very little. I want to thank you for your continued generosity of sharing the gleanings out of your home and the groceries that you bring and the clothing that you give as we pass on to those who have great need. I thank you. I thank you for your generosity. Let's pray. Lord God, we pray that we may know and believe and understand that we are not caught in our circumstance, even though the circumstances we are in are maybe unpleasant, maybe painful, maybe difficult, maybe confusing, maybe frustrating, but that you work all things together for good. 
for we who love you. We pray for that, that we may have your mind, your thoughts, your perspective. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you today.